Hi everyone, my name is Alba Rivas and today we're going to talk about DML, the Salesforce Data Manipulation Language. In Salesforce, operations performed in the database are done through two different languages. When you read records from the database, you use SQL. There is another quick take in which I explain the basics of SQL that you can take a look at. However, when you want to create, update or delete records, then you use DML, the Data Manipulation Language. DML is optimized to work on top of a multi-tenant architecture. There is a good explanation of multi-tenancy in the previous SQL video. Also, with DML, we prevent SQL injection attacks. With DML, you use different keywords in Apex to insert, update, delete, and even merge or undelete records. Now, let's take a look at the most common operations in VS Code. First, we have insert. With insert operations, you create records. The first thing that you need to do is to instantiate a record using the related class name, and then you set its field values. Finally, you use the keyword insert followed by the name of the variable in which the record definition is stored. You can use DML keywords also with collections. Indeed, this is the recommended way to perform DML operations because of governor limits and bulkification. If you don't know what governor limits are, these are restrictions or limitations that Salesforce imposes to your apps so that they don't hoard all the resources available. Because remember that you are sharing those resources with other tenants, other customers. There is a limit of a maximum of 100 SQL queries and a maximum of 150 GML operations per Apex transaction. Therefore, it is a good idea that you minimize the number of SQL queries and DML operations that your code performs, and you can do that by using collections of records. Great, so let's go back to VS Code and execute our insert operation. And we can see that a new record has been created and that the record is the one that we inserted with Apex. Now let's take a look at how update operations work. In order to do an update, we need to obtain a reference to the record. We can do that by using SQL, retrieving the record from the database. Then we can change the field values. Something important to note is that if you want to change a field value, then you need to retrieve that field in your SQL query. And finally, we use the update keyword. Again, it is recommended to do update DML operations over collections of records. Now, let's execute this DML operation and see the result. There we have our record description has been correctly updated. And finally, let's take a look at how to delete a record. To delete a record, you need to obtain a reference to the record again, and then just use the keyword delete. Let's execute this code and take a look at the result. We can see that the record is not in the record list anymore. Something important to understand regarding DML operations is how transaction control works in Salesforce. 
So a transaction is a single unit of DML operations and automations that happens from the moment in which a user invokes an action in a Salesforce or it can be like through the standard UI or by using a Lightning Web component or even by invoking a Salesforce API till the moment in which all the Apex triggers, Apex code and automation that are implemented behind the scenes finish. An example of a simple transaction could be this one. A user interacts with the Lightning Web component. The Lightning Web component calls an Apex class and in the Apex class method, we first check if the user has permission to execute a query over an object and then we execute the query. This was a very simple example, but when DML operations are involved, the thing gets much more complicated. So imagine that we have some Apex code that we are calling maybe through the API or through a Lightning Web component in which we are performing a set of DML operations. Let's say that we are trying to insert, insert a new species and then we are trying to insert a new plant. Every time that you perform a DML operation or that you modify a record through any of the Salesforce APIs, lots of things happen behind the scenes. The platform executes all the validations and automations for the object following the trigger order of execution. It may even happen that those automations trigger other DML operations launching the validations and automations for those related objects. So a transaction can become really complex. If everything finalizes correctly in the transaction, then the records will be saved to the database. However, if during that process anything fails, the platform will roll back automatically the database to the previous state. In this example, the whole transaction is rolled back because a validation on the plant object failed. To demonstrate this, what I did was to make the acquisition date field require on the plant object. That means that this plant insert must fail. Let's execute the code and see what happens. We see that the operation fails and if we go to the org, we can see that neither the species nor the plant have been created. If a DML operation fails because of a custom validation, a flow exception, an Apex trigger exception, whatever, your Apex code is going to receive an exception that you can control with try, catch, finally blocks. There is also a mechanism that allows you to perform partial rollbacks. It lets you take a picture of the database at a specific point in time and then manually roll back to that state. For instance, with this last piece of code, if the plant record creation fails, the species record will be created anyway. So let's demonstrate this executing some code again. Here we have the piece of code that we described. And what happens is that the operation doesn't fail because we are handling the exception ourselves. And if we go to the org, we see that the, despite the plant record creation failed, the species was created correctly because we did a partial rollback. That's all for today's video. I leave you some interesting resources here to learn more about DML and order of execution. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to receive notifications. Thank you very much and bye bye.